Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at the hardware and the software that a Husqvarna dealer uses to connect to equipment that accepts firmware updates. So I was uh, discussing with my dealer representative that I had some problems with the new Husqvarna Service Hub software and uploading firmware updates to some chainsaws. And he had mentioned that he had just been to a school that showed this new breakout box. And uh, he happened to have one in the truck. We hooked it up and he showed me how it worked. It was really um, a quick once over on the equipment. And what you see in this video here is my first solo attempt with no training at connecting this. And, uh, and then we'll look at the software as well, which I've used a little bit. Uh, pretty much I've been using the old uh, common service tool, which was the first version of the software that Husqvarna offered for connecting to auto-tune chainsaws or batteries or battery powered saws. So you can see we've got a new breakout box if you're familiar. There's two white lights on it. There's one of them. When it turns green, that means it's connected to the computer. There we go. When the other light turns green, that means that the equipment is connected through the box to the computer. So you can actually upload the firmware updates to this box as well. So now that the saw is connected, we'll get a warning that says, you know, the thing's live. It can run, so be careful when you're testing it. And you can see where I'm pointing that the box, the breakout box has its own... Uh, item that where you can update the firmware but here's the equipment we're trying to connect to the t540 ixp and it's showing us that it's connected so the first thing it'll give us is that the old hardware version and if there's a new hardware version if it was up to date and you'll see later this black box would be green so there's the old version that's in the saw now. Here's the new version it's going to upload. And you can see there's no choice for going backwards. So now that we've uploaded the, or hit the button to upload, you can see in the right corner here I'm showing you uh, the upload. It actually took five minutes for it to upload the firmware into the saw. So here's the new kit. You have a universal power adapter. I say universal because it comes with all these different prong plug-in ends, that European stuff, stuff I've never seen before. We got the, uh, the adapter, the brick, whatever you want to call it. And then there's a bunch of cables. So I've got two of the cables connected right now, one to my computer and one to the saw. You got this big spaghetti mess of stuff. I have no idea what this goes to. Maybe some zero turn lawnmowers. Maybe some uh, riders. Here's another cable with a, some kind of metal protective sheath on it. There's a cable that looks like it would work with an auto mower. And one that looks like it would work on an auto-tune chainsaw. I don't know. Like I said, I don't have any training on this. It's kind of getting done what I got to get done with it. So we're at 81%. Here's the product number for this. This comes in this box. It's pretty nice. There's a nice blurry shot of the product number for you. So now that we've reached 100% updating, you'll see the software switch to up to date. And as soon as it does that, it disconnects the equipment and then reconnects it. So that's why the screen's flashing like this. Now our our overview page shows that the equipment is up to date and we don't have to do a firmware update. So this Husqvarna Service Hub, you can get a lot of information out of here. 
It automatically added some service history that we updated the firmware. Uh, we can look through the service bulletins for the equipment that we have connected. And if we click the box on the right, it'll, it'll pull that service bulletin up. So here we've got one for improved chain tensioning. Um, and, you know, the service bulletins are pretty decent. Sometimes you get drawings, uh, sometimes you get real live pictures. Um, they, they've really come around on this. So there's a troubleshooting tab. We can see the total on time for battery equipment and total motor running time. If it was an auto-tune chainsaw, it would just say total run time. If there are error codes, they'll be stored in here. And this brand new piece of equipment has a couple of codes, probably uh, something during initial testing or my battery I put in there. Who knows? Nothing to be concerned about. But you can see that it has um, how many occurrences and when the last occurrence was. On an auto-tune chainsaw, that would say how many starts ago that occurrence was. It'll show you the total amount of starts. We can also do product tests. Here we got a trigger sensor, keypad, LED, and handguard test. And we'll come back to this and I'll show you how that works. Any documents connected with the equipment, you can just pop them up right here. For example, an owner's manual or a workshop manual. And if you want to look at the parts schematic, it's right there. There's a, a little box up on the right hand corner here. We'll click on this. And you'll see all your parts breaks down, breakdowns. So it's kind of handy having all this in one spot. They've, they've come a long way with what they had before. And the more I use it, the more comfortable I get. It's a pretty good, pretty good deal. So here's the product tests. Uh, we're going to do all the tests. And as soon as it completes a test, it switches to the next one. So now it's telling me to pull and hold the trigger. Well, you know what? This thing is live when it's hooked up this way, and I still had that sheath on the bar, so I'm going to have to replace that. So it uh, accepted that test, and it moved to the next one. It wants me to push the eco mode button. And now it accepted that, and it wants me to uh, look and see if all the LEDs are lit up. And just for giggles, I'm going to hit the no button, even though they were all lit up. I just want to see how it prints out. And now it's asking if they're all turned off, and they were. So I hit the yes button. Now it wants me to engage the uh, chain brake. So I will do that. So that's testing the switch and the brake. And you can see it passed all the tests except for the one that I lied about and said it failed. And then there's a spot down below where you can add comments. And in this case, I'm just going to write in there that I, it failed that test because I did it on purpose. I just wanted to, uh, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning this software, so I'm, I'm, I'm messing with it. Now the nice thing here is... You can print this out for the customer if you want. So I'm going to print this out and show you what that looks like. Everybody's got a printer in their toolbox, right? There we go. It's got the test results and it's got my comments on there. Now we're just going to put this stuff away. I do want to point out again, when it's hooked up like this with the jumper wire, uh, it, that saw runs. And if I would have hooked this wire that I'm disconnecting now to the battery, on a pro-grade battery, you'd be able to look at the runtime on that as well. So that's all I'm going to have for you on a first look at the new hardware for the Husqvarna Service Hub. Thanks for watching. Later.